All right, boys, with the anniversary being two feet away, we're just going to go ahead and talk about some of the buffs that are going to come during the anniversary because might as well talk about it before it drops, you know, a couple days before it. So we're kind of out ahead of it because I know once the anniversary drops, we're going to have like Castoria videos and summoning videos just out the wazoo more than you can keep track of. So I'm like, let me make sure I actually don't miss out on talking about this because this is absolutely huge. This is the... Uh, the strengthening campaign that comes with the anniversary as you can see it's spread out across six days and a lot of servants are getting buffs and a lot of them too as you can see you have like some three star servants in here right with like david and like who right you also have like low ready ones like phantom of the opera if you are using him right uh, but you also have characters that you probably re-rolled for like uh heracles or emia when you were first starting your account so these are like probably going to benefit a lot of players like at the very least this is stuff you can do. Like you can at least get the Phantom of the Opera one done, the um, Darius one done. You can get the David one done and you can get the Koo one done, right? And that's four uh, free like rank up quests that you're able to do, which is just really, really good. It's like just a little bit of extra material for you uh, to have in the back pocket. And then if you happen to have any of these other servants, which I mean, Brynhildr is like semi-popular. Raiko is very popular. I don't think really anybody summoned specifically for Consort U. If you're like the one Consort U fan in the comments down below, let me know. Shout it out. Let people know. Uh, Caskill, I know, is very popular. I know I summoned specifically for him. Musashi, I mean, I, I don't even have to, you know, talk about Musashi. She's super popular. And then Artoria, right? Like, so this, this benefits a lot of different people. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about them. I pulled up all the different servants that I'm already on their, their little page, so... As you can see, like I already got Phantom's thing pulled up over here. So originally, Phantom of the Opera has this chance to charm a female or canis enemy for one turn, right? It's a 90% chance. Not super great. I mean, it's not super, super good, but they decided to buff it to where at the very least now he can charm anybody, right? It is not, you know, conducive on them being a female or canis, right? Still has the 90% chance. Uh, but it is nice that it is just an omni charm for one turn. But more importantly, he just straight up removes their buffs. And this is actually really, really good. You guys know that I always talk about and I really uh, fangirl out about servants that could just remove uh, like enemy buffs, right? Because it's so strong, right? Um, just the ability for you to just yeet off everything that your opponent has, whether it be like invincibility, stacked defense, um, attack buffs massive crit buffs that they've accumulated over the fight it's just really really strong to eat all that stuff off now do keep in mind that a lot of bosses do have i don't want to say a lot but some bosses have like unremovable buffs right so he won't be able to remove those types of buffs but it, it gives a little bit more merit to phantom of the opera like this is a, a good skill to have it in practice can immobilize an enemy for a turn if the charm goes off and remove all of their buffs so I mean, he's still a long way to, he's got a long way to go before he's actually good, but you know, it's a step in the right direction, right? Like it's not, it's not too bad. Then over here, you can see that we have Brynhildr. This is when she's going to go ahead and get her battery. Um, as someone that has Brynhildr, I could not be more elated that she finally gets this and, and, and it's a 30% battery. You know what that means? You give her the second of pen skill, she basically has a 50% battery. You can use this girl for farming, which means if you ever encounter some just absolutely massive bumbaclut enemy in one of your uh, your farming nodes right you know you got like three enemies in wave one one really big archer or berserker in wave two and then just three enemies in the back you bring in your brynhildr with any 50 percent starting charge ce and she's just going to yeet that guy into kingdom come this is very very good for brynhildr and honestly like as i like look at the rest of her kit in particular i really just think like if we see a buff to this skill like legitimately just make both of these three turn instead of one turn i think brin holder is like back in the meta right like i think she's back in because the only problem is that brin holder that brin holder has right now is that like she kind of fires her np the one time with this and then she's kind of waiting around for four turns to get her damage steroid back for her np so i mean she's got a good damage mod now she has a battery this skill is still very very good because you know you use it on herself and she gets massive star weight and she gets some pretty good crit damage as well so it's like brinhilder this this definitely does take her a step in the right direction uh to becoming like a good meta servant again uh because when she first came out she was definitely very very good and just has slowly fallen off a little bit more and more but 
I definitely like where they're going with Bryn Hilder. It's definitely very, very strong for her. And as someone that owns Bryn Hilder, I'm pretty excited. Uh, then we got our boy Darius. This is probably a servant that a lot of people forget even exists, right? Uh, but he has a very strong guts over here that lasts for five turns on a seven turn cooldown. So it is pr it's pretty much up more than it's down, right? Which is a very good thing to have on a guts. It means you're usually mostly protected. And as a berserker over here, you want to have stuff like that. But then they go ahead and they give him this ability to give him a little bit extra damage. He's able to reduce all enemies buster resistance by 20% for three turns. So it's looking like Darius is going to be like this aoe boss killing servant because you typically like you're not going to use them for farming or anything like unless they just give him randomly like a 50 percent battery you're not going to use them to farm with koya and skaya it looks like they're trying to set him up to like be fighting some enemies for a good amount of turns because if they wanted it to be like something you used in different waves they would give him like a straight up buster buff but when you reduce the enemies when you focus on debuffing them typically that means you want to be fighting that enemy for a decent amount of time like you're going to be uh facing them for quite a while right like that's the best usage for it so you get all three turns of this buster resistance down so it's again kind of like phantom of the opera it's definitely now a very good skill it is very very strong it's going to give him a lot of extra damage um especially because he is a berserker and has a triple buster deck as you can see uh but he still has a ways to go before he's considered like a good servant but it is a good step in the right direction uh, then on day three, we're going to go ahead and get, oh no, whoa, 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 I skipped over Raiko, almost completely skipped over Raiko, although kind of understandable because she doesn't get a whole lot, as you can see. Um, she really just gets the buff here, as you can see, uh, the damage scaling for getting a buffed NP, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I understand that Raiko is kind of scary to buff because Raiko can become disgustingly good really quickly because... You see that she has high hits on her NP, she can massively gas up her star gen whenever she fires her NP, meaning she'll always drop stars for herself. She's a zerk, meaning you can bring her anywhere. This buff is absolutely nutty, right? She's getting 60% crit damage and giga high star weight. And then she's also, um, you know, has, I mean, well, this probably needs to get buffed to three turns, right? If it's going to be stuck at 30%, but she has her own buster buff, has survivability, and then has very good special damage mods, right? That are already on three turn cooldowns. Like, this is already something you'd kind of see in today's meta. It's just like, maybe this would just be three turns instead of three attacks. And then like, this would probably be three turns right there. So you can definitely tell they were like, let's just give Raiko a little bit of extra damage and we'll throw her a bone and say that she can do this and protect herself from crits a little bit because um raiko is definitely one of those servants that if you imagine like a servant on a balance right they're on this balance where it's like if they give her like one more even just like decent buff boom she spills over into being like a giga supremely op servant but if they give her like some lackluster buffs she tips over and just kind of stays as a good servant right so it feels like they're trying to keep the the mom raiko in check right it seems like they're trying to keep her from being too nutty op but still it is very good regardless because it is buffing her np damage as much as this is kind of an l the fact that she is getting a buff to her np damage does mean your raiko is now going to be hitting harder but okay now we move over to day three and this is where the boy david's going to be getting a buff to his np and honestly David's NP I never thought was really that bad because he's able to pierce evasion, which is a pretty good effect to have. And he's able to seal the enemy skills uh, for a turn, which I think is really good. Uh, then they decide that they're like, what if we just let him nuke giant enemies, right? Which I guess I will pull this up over here to show you guys like what all giant enemies you could be expecting to fight. A little bit of a cut there because uh, OBS was kind of freaking out for a second. But yeah, these are the giant enemies you could expect to fight to be able to use David against. And uh, thankfully, he can actually use this giant buff against a lot of these people because Spriggans tend to be sabers. I believe a lot of the giants can also be sabers. Uh, the Oni can come in Berserker or Saber. I believe the giants also can come in Berserker, which again, because David is an archer, you can use him against sabers or archers super effectively. I believe Nobus can also come in Saber Berserker, which is very good. If they bring Megalos back for some like anniversary memorial fight, I don't know if they will because... They've already done that in the past with like Columbus, but if they do, uh, he's very good against that. Uh, Surtur, if you need to do the Tugunska Sanctuary, which will be coming to NA uh, later on, I, not anytime soon, uh, but it will come, I believe, like next year. Uh, Surtur does come back for a rematch as like a pretty tough battle in there, I would say. 
And uh, you could use David if you don't have anybody better to take him down, because Surtur is a saber. And so just generally, it works out very well. I think there are a few servants, like Summer BB that are giant. Yeah, like Summer BB, like these guys you can all use uh, him as well against, which Ibuki actually has a boss fight, if I remember correctly, like in... Um, uh, what is it called? Ashia Domen's event, uh, which is called Lost Belt 5.5, but she has a fight there that you can use them up against. Asterius, I don't believe, really has any boss fight against. Uh, none of that is Darius, unless we're talking about, like, the Fate Excel Zero Over event. Uh, Zhang Yu does come back on JP. Like, he just came back recently with, like, some high-difficulty boss fight event version of, like, the um, Lan Ling and Zhang Yu fight. And so if you need somebody clutch to just come in out of nowhere and nuke him for damage, David could be your guy. So regardless, it's a very, very strong buff for him, not only buffing the damage of his NP, but also giving him a very, very strong special damage mod, especially considering his class. Then we have, uh, not Zhang Yu, I almost said Zhang Yu, Consort Yu, my bad. They both got the Yu in the name, but originally this buff uh, gave her buff removal resistance for one turn. That is supposed to kind of like counteract her removing her buffs on uh, her NP. I'm assuming that's what it's supposed to be there to counteract. Uh, then she also gets a thousand HP every single turn, but they decided to give her a little bit of extra damage by giving her 30% attack for three turns. And then realizing that she should probably keep this buff removal resistance for longer, they gave her the 100% buff removal resistance for three turns. So hopefully you have a bit of an easier time using Consort U. I know uh, she is definitely a very divisive servant because a lot of people will uh, find this to particularly be annoying but look they they, they try to give you an out for consort you i i guess i suppose they try to give you something to counteract it i still think just why man why i, I get it there's lore reasons but dude what why bro like like why why make me use passion lips first skill to neg her third skill stun you know what i'm saying like why build weird quirks into servants like that it's just i don't know it's really really weird it's very very strange because you just make them less popular for doing so and I don't think Consort U deserves it. I, th I, think I think she's fine, all right? And I'm not saying that just because, you know, cute design. I swear, I'm not saying it just because of that. I promise. <laughs> but then we have Neza coming up. Uh, Neza's going to be getting an NP upgrade, as you guys can see right here. Originally, her NP's not super great, and after he gets buffed, it's still not very great. It gets the higher damage scaling, and they decided to make her a better burn servant by giving her 3k burn instead of 1k. I mean... If we ever get like some support that's kind of like say um oh what is her name van gogh because van gogh if you guys don't know she kind of plays around with curses and uh like makes use of like your servants putting curses around on everybody if we get somebody like that who's like really specializing into burn that could be really good but unfortunately the best servant i think to pair with burn right now is um uh yang right the new year servant right uh, i think She's like the best servant to pair with Burn because she just absolutely slams Burn enemies. But I don't think you're pairing Neza with Yang, right? Like, I don't think that's something you're going to be doing. So, unfortunately, as of now, unless they maybe give Neza some, like, ability to have a special damage mod against burned enemies, not super good. Um, Arjuna, actually, this buff is really, really strong for him because it's going to make him a little bit more consistent. Right now, he charges his own battery by 25% and gives himself a little bit of HP and a little bit of stars every single turn four or five turns on a 10 turn cooldown. What they went ahead and did is kick the legs out on that cooldown, reducing it to eight, and then also gave him an extra 10% NP every single turn for five turns, which again, like a lot of the other servants we're talking about here, doesn't exactly make him the most phenomenal servant in the world, but it does give him a good step in the right direction to becoming a good servant. This is definitely something that is going to help Arjuna remain a like good consistent servant long into the fight because he has just these these really good just generic buffs he's getting like everybody wants to get np everybody wants to get stars everybody wants hp right everybody wants to stay alive so these are all just good generic things that he's getting and on top of the fact that you know he's basically debuff immune for the entire battle he's definitely going to shape up to be an interesting servant let's just get this third skill buffed maybe and we'll see what direction he goes in uh, so that's definitely really really good for him Caskill actually gets an insane buff to his NP over here because they actually kind of help him out in being a crit servant. Get this stuff off the side of my screen, man. <laughs> but man, sometimes the, the fandom wiki gets a little annoying with that. But yeah, um, as you guys can see right now, basically his NP is designed to be a sp uh, star bomb in conjunction with his first skill here. Just massively gasping up his uh, crit star generation rate and having high hits on it. 
Although, aside from that, it was a little bit lackluster, but now he's actually able to give the entire party 30% crit damage for three turns, and this helps make his party get some usage out of the stars he's providing, right? Either Caskill himself can try to do a little bit of a cheeky crit, or he's actually providing stars and crit damage for the party now, and it just makes him that much better. Again, I think Caskill is maybe like a buff or two off from being like an insanely good uh, art support type servant, but this definitely makes his NP more worth going for, right? Because now it's a star bomb and the things that it's providing are actually like really, really worth going for now as he is a supposed to be a crit support type servant. So this is definitely very, very strong. Musashi's is probably like the most popular one that people are looking forward to because if you don't have Kama, you're going to be looking for Musashi to deal with all of your alter egos because now she is going to be slamming them in the dome piece with her massive NP. Also, if you don't have, um, what's it called, a ruler to deal with any uh, moon cancers that you might run into, you got Musashi. So Musashi is doing double work, taking care of all alter egos and all moon cancer servants, which there's not a whole lot of, but when they crop up, they're usually quite the annoying fight. And uh, Musashi being the best girl for the job definitely helps that out. I mean, I know some people were kind of uh, struggling to deal with the King Protea fight, and isn't it annoying that they put out a servant that maybe if you like you stack them up enough on buffs, they could just outright one shot that King Protea. Isn't it annoying that they gave her the buff right after King Protea's fight leaves, bro? It's just like you gotta love how cheeky FGO can be sometimes. They they give you this like really really difficult, uh, big thick King Protea fight to go up and fight. And then they're like, right after, they're like, hey, wasn't that annoying? Well, uh, we made Musashi the perfect girl for the job. And you're like, bro, where were you like two days ago? Literally, where were you two days ago, man? So it's like, it is an insanely good buff, but I, I love that little bit of cheeky irony. She also gets a little bit of a buff right here, as you can see, to her um, NP damage. They raise it by an additional 10%. So not only is she just doing more damage because the damage modifier gets raised but then this is also going up as well meaning that even if you're not fighting these people musashi is still going to be just choke slamming people into the ground but these are the final buffs that we get on the uh sixth day of the anniversary and this is why i always refer to it as like the fate stay night set of buffs because we get the four main cast members, well not four main, but because we're still missing people like Medusa and Medea, where are their buffs, DW? Because this was your anniversary and they chose to leave them out, why? Medusa and Medea definitely need some of the buffs and some of the love as well. Where's Hassan, man? Where are these other guys at? But uh, still, I call it the Fate Stay Night set of buffs because for the four of the main Fate Stay Night servers, I mean, I'd say the four main guys, although you have Emmy and Artoria, those are basically the main guys already, right? But um, they receive their buffs and they are all cracked because the difference between, I would say like a lot of these guys and a lot of the other people down here that are getting their buffs is a lot of these other guys, you can see that they're kind of like already good like Musashi and are getting way better or like someone like Raiko, Brynhildr, like they're kind of sneaking in into becoming like these really good servants, right? Or people like Phantom or uh Darius over here are kind of getting buffs that you know they're still not great but they're getting better they're moving in the right direction these guys are already good they're already servants that people already use and acknowledge as being good servants and now they're just even better so looking at Ku already has again this is literally the same battle continuation skill that Darius had right very good five turns of guts on a seven turn cooldown it's pretty much up all the time well, FGO just said, hold my beer because Ku Kalein is not doing enough damage. And basically, depending on how much uh, HP the guy has left, he gets that big of an attack buff for the next three turns. So basically, Ku can now just start being absolutely cracked. He is a survivability servant. He is a solo servant. There will be times in the fight where you get very low on HP because you're getting towards the tail end of the fight. And guess what? That is when Ku is going to show his true colors and he is going to absolutely obliterate the enemy. And overall, it just basically fixes, I guess, the one area that Ku was lacking in and that was damage because everything else on this guy is absolutely nutty for survivability, right? Like everything else is good. I mean, even his NP is kind of cracked a little bit. I mean... <laughs> So it's just like, Ku was already good, he's even better now. Now we have Herc, who, this is more of a buff and more of a reward for people that already have Herc's Bond CE. Because what this does is basically every time when his uh, guts gets proc'd, 
he gets a 20% buster buff for five turns. Now, the reason it's on that five turns, I'm assuming, is that like they're kind of trying to make it balance on the fact that like some people may not have maybe like hurts bond ce so they're trying to make it like last longer so maybe you proc this at some point and like i don't know you got like able to like loop the skill i don't really know what they're trying to go for something along those lines but like maybe it's like the the guts gets procced on like the last turn that you know your guts was up and then then like so it goes for five more turns then in a couple of turns your skill comes back and you can stack another one so i'm assuming like maybe they were trying to like be considerate for those people but if you have the bond te you don't have to worry about all that that numpty nonsense like none, none of that matters to you like that that's that's all cringe you got the bond te if you have the bond te you're going to be just stacking giga amounts of herc's own buster buff and you are just going to be slamming the enemy into the ground which again I don't think it was really necessary. I think Herc was absolutely fine as one of the better solo servants in the game, but now they're like, he's not doing enough damage. All right, every time he loses a Guts, give him more damage. And then he just can start just ripping into the enemies. He is just absolutely broken with this skill. Again, I don't know if he necessarily needed it, but the guy definitely got it. Emiya is probably the most sought after buff out of all of them, because as you guys can tell, First buff, not very good. Second buff, now we're talking. Now, Emiya can just decide if he would like to be an arts or buster servant, and he can just decide if he would rather be an arts looping servant or a star bombing servant with his buster NP, or if he would just like to farm with Koyan Sky or something like he, the guy's just a little nuts. Like he's just he's just crazy. He can play with anybody, basically. Like the only person he's not friendly with is Scotty, and honestly. Emmy would probably be a little disgusting if he could uh, if he could also swap to being a quick servant he'd probably be really gross uh you could tell that they definitely wanted you to be able to use him with castoria but i'm like dog you you gave us a 10 hit arts np when his np gains not even that bad considering that he has 10 hits and they buffed these all to 50 percent it's like dog like come on bro like you didn't have to make him that sick nasty with the sauce, bro. You, you did not have to make him that sick nasty with it. And in fact, like, in like three turn farming setups, it's like people will just like use his arts NPs and loops and then they'll just finish out the final node with a buster NP that just hits super hard. So it's like, it, 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 he, he's just disgusting. He's just gross, all right? He's, he's just, he's filthy, all right? Someone needs to clean up Emmy with how filthy he is. And Artoria is not much better. She's disgusting as well because they were like, you know what Artoria needs? More damage. And it's like, bro, she's already like the hardest hitting like AOE saber in the game by a mile. And they were like, let's make that gap wider. Oh, and by the way, she goes Ooga Booga for a turn. And you're like, bro, she just slams everybody for a turn. You know how nice it is when you're like, oh man, I have like all these stars and you know, I wish, like, I can do a Brave Chain, but I really wish those were Buster cards to finish out this fight, because I think I could, like, take the enemy out if I had Buster cards. Well, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Not only are you going to get the big damage for the Buster cards, but now you're just going to convert everything to a Buster card, and you know what? Now your NP does more damage. So, these guys were already all good. Like, I, maybe the worst one was Artoria, but now Artoria just now fulfills the niche as, like, do you need to just slam a what like a node of enemies and she'll do that especially for the fact that she is koyan skaya compatible because 30 percent battery so she's just gross now like they're they're all gross they're all super super stupid good and i'm just sitting here wondering like where was my medea and my medusa buff man because these guys got for you know let's let's just be honest they got the sloppy toppy 5000 right and I wanted to see Medusa and Medea get the sloppy toppy 5,000, you know, pardon my words, guys, but like Medusa and Medea, are, they're, they're, they're hot, bro. Like they're some of the, they're some of the best fate waifus we got, bro. So like, where's their buffs, man? <laughs> but all right, enough, enough simping for Medusa and Medea. All right. You know, I'm, I'm just a big fan of hollow ataraxia. I promise. <laughs> but yeah, with all that being said, which one of these buffs are you most looking forward to? For me personally, I have Bryn Hilder, so I'm hyped about that. I am very hyped about Caskill because he was one of the servants I went out in particular for. I am both hyped and not hyped for Musashi because I have summoned for Musashi four different times and she has not come to me. I finally got her Berserker version, thank the Lord, but I'm like, 
I feel like I'm the what is it though the red skull meme like I'm guiding others to a treasure I can't have or something bro but I have all of these guys and my Emia is NP5 and I am super excited about that because I'm like he's gonna be so good bro I'm so ready I'm rubbing my hands right now and thinking about it but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below make sure you leave a like and you subscribe for that daily FGO content and with that being said anniversary is one day closer I will see you guys on the Day of Reckoning. Peace.